welcome to Black Belt Selling with Stephanie and Anna Scheller. I'm Anna. And I'm Stephanie. We are a mother-daughter team who are passionate about helping you grow your business through sales and revenue-producing activities. On Black Belt Selling, we bring amazing guests, like the guests we have today, who can help you in the areas of marketing, in the areas of even leadership and mindset, because mindset is so critical to your performance, to your success as a business owner, as well as teaching you techniques and systems to help you grow your business by making more sales. You can learn more about us by going to our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash black belt selling. There we post our um, our podcasts when they come up. We have motivational posts that people share with, a, with each other. And it's just a good all around place to get to know people. And actually, our guest is part of our group, actually. As soon as, uh, as, soon as we met, he popped right into the group and invited or asked to be invited. And so... He invited uh, himself in? What's up with that? I thought we were a little more picky. <laughs> <laughs> Not when we have great guests like this, uh, Stephanie. So um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you today, Danny Young. Danny, welcome to Black Belt Selling. Thank you so much for having me here. It's great to be here. It is, it is. Danny is on a mission to help entrepreneurs learn how to successfully grow their businesses online through social media and the internet. Now, we're gonna ask Danny about this, but he actually walked away from a corporate job to start his own business and um, he's going to share with us how it's really possible to follow your dreams. And he's a master at social media marketing, and he empowers other people to do the same through coaching, mentorship, and through his own leadership. And we just found out he just completed an online master class today, right? Yeah, that's right. I just completed the final module of my latest training program. Oh, wouldn't you like to be a a fly on the wall for that, wouldn't you? But of course, we wouldn't need to if we pay for the master class. But um, but I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful time. Danny and I met previously, and we really enjoyed just getting to know each other. So I know we're going to have a very information and entertaining black belt selling episode. So um, Danny. Well, first and foremost, a lot of people who listen to black belt selling are folks who have maybe wanted to step away from corporate America. Um, well, we say corporate America, but the, the corporate scene, obviously, wasn't corporate America in your case. Um, but they might be nervous about stepping out on their own, starting their own business, um, especially as they get you know more mature in life, think, thinking maybe they just don't, really don't have what it takes to build a business. So tell us a little bit about when you left the corporate world and um, and how you became successful. Sure. Well, I I made a decision that I needed to leave the corporate world um, around about seven years ago now, and that's when we found out that my eldest son James was on his way. We didn't know he was going to be called James at the time, obviously, but my wife told me that I was pregnant, and not that I was pregnant, sorry, that she was pregnant. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, that's <it's> amazing. <laughs> I told you, it's, I've just finished this masterclass and I'm just kind of putting my head back together. But uh, yeah, so my wife told me that she was pregnant and I kind of took stock of where I was and what I started to, well, I kind of realized this, but it, it brought it all to the fore. I, I was very aware that I actually wasn't spending that much time at home. Uh, I was kind of married more to my job than I was to my wife at times, which was not really how, how we wanted things to be. But my job had kind of t really taken over my life. And every time it, it called for my time, I would go to it because it was a commission. Well, it was a, a salary plus commission role because I was in sales and marketing. Um, but it was very demanding. And my boss mm -hmm. was very demanding. And um, I wasn't very happy. Uh, I, I was out socializing with clients a lot of the time. And wasn't really looking after myself anyway so I think when you have a strong enough vision then you can you can make things happen and you know we've kind of mentioned a little bit about mindset already but I decided I wanted to become an entrepreneur 
And what, what I first decided was I needed to leave my job. And I was, I was trying to think about ways that I could kind of have a balanced lifestyle that, that would allow me to be at home and be a good dad, but would also generate a, a, a decent level of income. And I was earning really good money as well. So it was quite a difficult time for me in, in terms of making a decision. But then, uh, as luck would have it, I was given a flyer at a train station one morning uh, on the way into work. And it was about an opportunity specifically in network marketing. Uh, and then that was my first kind of foray into the world of entrepreneurship. So I would love to say that it was an overnight success. It absolutely wasn't. It was, you know, there were, there were challenges as there often are when you're kind of making a, a big transition like that. But um, I, I was always going to put severe you know there, there wasn't anything that was going to get in the way because i knew that i had to make a stiff, significant change i was uh, 35 at the time when james was born and i'd wanted i've wanted to be a dad all my life so i wasn't about to let a career get in the way of me being a fantastic father so i knew i needed to be around at home and i i just i just persevered and i tried and tried and tried to make things work and i actually went back to my boss and told him i wanted to leave the company and he said to me that as a really valued member of staff that he wanted me to stay. And we, we ended up negotiating uh, an arrangement where I would do 50% of my working hours for, for him. And then he said I could spend the other 50% of my working hours building up my new business. And we, he could try kind of transition me out of the business while I was building. The problem was, is that it didn't work out like that. I really just ended up negotiating a pay cut because as I said, every time that sales job kind of raised its hand and said, Danny, come over here. I need you to do something. I'd drop everything else and go because that was the way that I was used to working. So I just negotiated a pay cut and it ended up that I started to feel quite bitter about it because the agreement that we signed, there was no room for maneuver in it. And in the end, I ended up just getting to the point where I turned around to my wife and said, I have to make the break now or this is never going to happen. Um, I'd managed to build up my business to a point where it was earning an income, but it was nowhere near what I was used to earning in my sales job because there were times when that was a six figure a year um, income. But we agreed that the life that we wanted to have was only going to happen if I could get out of my job. So we made some changes to our lifestyle. Um, we made some cuts in certain areas, you know, no longer were we going to be taking two or three holidays a year. We kind of downsized to one, one vehicle uh, for the family and, you know, made a few adjustments and got to a point where I was able to, to walk away from the, the corporate job. And I've just been building, you know, steadily since there, on, on a, an incredible journey, learning about lots and lots of different things, trying lots of different things, failing at lots of different things, succeeding at some of those things that I was trying, which has ended up getting me to where I am today, albeit seven years later. But I didn't actually manage to leave my job until 2013. So it took me three years from finding out that my wife was pregnant to just entrepreneur and kind of take charge of my own destiny and then eventually being able to actually extrapolate myself from the job escape the corporate world uh, and become this this full-time entrepreneur which I am now wow I think people think that sometimes they have this idea in their head that it's going to be easy to pull that off um, to to replace their corporate job because you know if you think about it most of us did not have to work very hard to get our jobs and so we think it can't be that hard to replace them um, but as you kind of pointed out, there's, there's kind of a mental thing that ends up happening too. And you can end up getting suckered back in longer than you wanted to. So, um, huge kudos. I'm always a big fan yeah. of the whole, you know, take your life in your own hands and, and run with it and not let anybody else control you or dictate it for you. So huge fan. Well, she did that yeah, too. So, I mean, this girl did that. She decided and in six months walked away from a corporate job and yeah, scary. but I had a lot of incentive to get away from my corporate job. <laughs> uh, so there was there was cash flow not for happening, the commission cuts. You know, I will tell you, if you really want to walk away from your job, the best way is to convince them to cut your paycheck, as you found out, Danny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but okay, so I am curious, as since we're talking some mindset stuff, one of the things we do talk about about and being a black belt is cultivating the right mindsets because a lot of it comes down to 
your thoughts, your thought process, your thinking, uh, where you're at mentally, when it comes down to that black belt test and you're six hours in and they are still asking you for more stuff, the only thing that's going to keep you going is the right mindset. So what have you discovered as far as mindset goes that's really made a difference for you in your journey and in your quest for this, this success that you're now finally sitting here going, this feels cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love that question. I, I love it because mindset for me is um, a, a massive, massive part of of who I am now, and, and it certainly wasn't back then. And it, it's funny, you know, we people often talk about the benefit of hindsight, but you know, I can see how things could have been very different if I was applying, even in my in my career, if I was applying the mindset work that I do now, things could have been uh, very, very different indeed. But you know, the we talked about the masterclass that I've just now finished. The first module in that is entirely focused on goals, vision, and mindset, because I believe that it's the foundation for people to succeed, especially in the world of entrepreneurship, because we don't have, you know, generally speaking, you know, certainly for myself and for a lot of, a lot of other people that I work with, we are fairly isolated because we don't go to an office to work. We work from home Mm. and we don't have other people to bounce off of generally speaking, certainly not in our, lo- our close vicinity, unless we're fortunate enough to have our, you know, our significant other, you know, husband, wife, um, partner at home with us. But even then they're probably doing their own thing and you're doing your own thing. So, you know, it, when, when I was in the corporate environment, there were lots of people I could bounce ideas off of. If I was feeling like things weren't working out, I could grab a coffee or we could talk at the water cooler, you know, that kind of environment. You don't have that when you're a home-based entrepreneur. And, what I what I realized, having done a lot of personal development work since I quit my corporate job as well, I realized that mindset was something that I was really going to need to work on because you've got to give yourself the best possible chance of, you know, getting up in the morning and, and, and taking the day, grabbing it, grabbing it with both hands and seeing it through until it's finished. And it's so very easy, especially when you're doing something online, when you're building online, like I do, it's so very easy for distractions to crop up. You know, <laughs> Skype, you know, we all know about Facebook, notifications, pinging, emails coming in. I mean, you know, am I a saint? No, every now and again, because I build my business on Facebook predominantly, it's very easy to just kind of find yourself thinking, hang on a minute, I've just lost five minutes of the day, if you're lucky, scrolling through my news feed. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's very it's difficult to avoid that. Um, right. So what, you know, what I like to teach people is that there are, measures that you can take to give yourself the boss the best possible chance for success and it all it all for me starts at the very the very beginning of the day so i have a a routine that i follow in in the morning where i i do work on my mindset i I can go into it in as much detail or as little detail as you would like but generally i I spend the first hour of my day working on my mindset Um, i get up early and I, i make sure that i condition myself so that I come into the day full of confidence, ambition, drive, desire, and what what I need in order to succeed ultimately. So, um, you know, visualization plays a big part in that for me. I'm a big I'm a big believer in visual, but doing that by itself doesn't get you results. But it helps you to apply what you need to apply in order to make the results happen. I think. Um, say that piece again about visualization. We had a little bit of connection issue. So visualization is a big part, but it's not everything. So just kind of, I know sometimes you get into the groove, you re, it's hard to repeat it, but if no, you can give fine. us the essence, yeah. Yeah, so the essence of what I'm trying to say there is that visualization for me is hugely important. You know, I believe that you can, that I, th- I think that there is, something in visualization i don't know exactly what it is but by projecting Mm -hmm. yourself forward and 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 kind of seeing yourself in 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 a state of where you want your life to be you can kind Mm -hmm. of almost build the path for yourself but it it doesn't Mm -hmm. stop there if you were to sit there visualizing all day you're not going to get the results you need to be hustling and putting the work in and and doing the activity that's going to get you there so i think it just it helps to plant subconscious seeds but ultimately it helps to pull you through having a strong vision helps to pull you through the Mm -hmm. times when you maybe don't feel like doing something or 
you know, you, you get a result that doesn't go the way that you wanted it to, or so, you know, something crops up during the day that could maybe previously have thrown you off course slightly, having that strong vision, visualization kind of different to vision being part of that helps to pull you through but you can't just sit there and expect the uh you know the law of attraction to to make things happen for you you've got to put the work in as well that was my point yeah i i agree um i think for a while when law of attraction i believe the law of attraction is real but i believe the law of attraction doesn't operate in a vacuum and so you have to have that visualization but I think good visualization also spurs you on to activity. It gets you moving. It gets you looking forward to it. And then you suddenly look for, how can I make this happen? What do I need to do? And, and you start to have the confidence because I think a lot of people lack confidence. I know for myself that some mornings I wake up and I'm thinking, oh, you know, what if this happens and what if this happens and, and all the what ifs that can pop up. And, and then I have to shake myself and go, what if that happens? Are you capable? You know, think about what you would do. I actually did that this morning. I had a couple of situations that didn't, were looking to sour. And so I actually just sat down and thought, okay, how am I going to handle those situations? What if this happens? And um, that's, uh, that's part of the visualization I use. Is that some of the visualization that you use to kind of map out what can happen with different situations? Or um, how do you use – it's not one of our questions, but I think it's an important thing for people to yeah. understand how to yeah. use visualization. Yeah, so – I tend to use visualization slightly differently. Not that I try and address a number of potentially different scenarios that could crop up during the day, but I tend to focus on what my ideal life will look like in the future. So mm. part of my morning routine is listening to, you know, I, I have a vision mapped out for myself and it's quite a vivid vision that goes into quite a lot of detail about, you know, the kind of house that I want to live in, where I want to live, who I'm surrounded with, how I'm feeling. Um, you know, it goes into quite a lot of detail. And I, I write that out, I've written that out. And then I've recorded an audio of myself reading it out loud. And I listen to that every morning just to kind of tune my mind into my, my ultimate goals and where I want to get to. And then I... I mean, I've followed a lot of training on this from different people, you know, over the course of the past few years. But I then spend some time kind of projecting myself there, actually trying to think about how it feels to, to have achieved what I'm looking to achieve. So it's that kind of visualization that it, it kind of all pulls into my vision and it helps it to, to, I think, just by subconsciously kind of feeling how it's going to feel once I've achieved that, it kind of locks everything in. And then that drives me to take action. But part of the law of attraction in there as well. I, again, I'm a believer in the law of attraction because I believe that things have happened so far as a result of that for me. And um, yeah, it just kind of all comes together. But I have this routine that I follow every single morning. But in terms of my visualization, it's more a case of me looking at what my, I want my kind of utopia to be. Very very cool. And, you know, for listeners that are listening, that that's a really important key to establishing your goals. And um, because you have to start to be, the visualization helps you to believe that. And you have to feel it. I mean, that's part of it. You have to set that vibration, that emotion that you're already in possession of it and you're already enjoying it. So um, thank you for sharing that. I think that's really important for, for listeners to hear. Because even if we know it, you know, we hear it, it's always good to get a fresh um, perspective of somebody that's actually doing it and is successful with it. Um, now, You're welcome. Yeah. Um, when people think about black belts, they a lot of times think about experts. You know, like Stephanie and I are black belts, and so people think that, you know, we could – we could go in and, you know, slay, yeah, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> um, but, um, but really establishing yourself as an expert in your niche doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have years and years and years and years of training. How do you help people? I know one of your specialties is helping people 
to establish themselves as experts. How, how do you help people do that? What can somebody do to establish themselves as an expert? Yeah, love that question. So I think the beauty of being perceived as an expert is that you, you only really need to know more than your audience knows. That, that <laughs> you know, that, that <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> that is the beauty of being an expert so if you find an audience of people in a certain subject field that are relative novices and they will exist because everybody has to start somewhere right then you can study a little to get you know so if you are completely new completely you know let's say somebody says i want to become like i did when i left my corporate job i want to become a successful entrepreneur i didn't quite know what that consisted of now you know having been on the journey i know exactly what it is because it's what i do but i was really really interested in online marketing and what i decided to do was to study it so i started to learn specific things about online marketing i think i started off pretty much with um, doing stuff on facebook and then i started to build an audience and the audience were people that were like me but probably three to six months prior that had no no clue about you know what, what i had suddenly what i had i had since learned what you can do is you can continue to increase your knowledge while you're addressing the needs of that audience to eventually become an expert over time so i guess my point here is that everybody has to start somewhere and if you want to become an expert then you've first got to identify the field that you want to become an expert in. And then secondly, you need to study and you need to have a thirst for knowledge and an almost unwavering desire to be the best that you can be in that, in that niche. Now that's kind of how I advise my students to get started. But of course, at the outset, I avoid the use of the word expert because they're not, they're not an expert, but you know, what is an expert? It's someone who is, very knowledgeable or skillful in a particular area about a particular subject matter so you know as i said it's really important that you continue that quest to become that to become somebody that's the go-to person um for a particular subject and you know i think it's it's fair to say that when i first started my entrepreneurial journey i wanted to please too many people so i didn't have a very clear understanding of you know the audience that i wanted to address um and that's something that i definitely recommend that people work on and i refer to it as your personal brand because your personal brand is about defining not just you as an individual and what you stand for and what you're passionate about and you know how you want to be remembered and what you want people to think of when your name is mentioned but it, it goes it goes beyond that because you need to also think about the audience that you're going to address so you need to understand a lot about their um you know their demographic but also you know um, what it is that they need and what it is that they desire. And then you've got to think about how you can solve their problems. And the personal brand kind of encompasses all of that. So it, it, you know, it's taken me since I started to really work online, which was about four years ago, it's taken me four years to get to where I am now. But now I, you know, I believe I'm an expert when it comes to things like personal branding and attraction marketing. Um, but I, I also know that with my capacity and desire to learn more, that my, my journey is not over and I continue to study. And, you know, we've mentioned the course that I've just put together. I've put together that course, but already I'm thinking about the next course I want to put together with some new strategies that I've been learning and their strategies that I'm putting into practice, seeing results from, and then I'm teaching back to my others. And that for me is where you really can start to create yourself an expert when you've had the results and mm -hmm. you understand how to make those results happen and you can teach that to other people. Mm. And I like how you've, you've placed it from that perspective, because uh, I see people sometimes who try and come in as the expert, but they don't have anything to prove that they know what they're talking about. They're like, well, I've seen it so many times, um, you know, and, and that only goes so far having seen it and seen it and seen it until you actually can do it. Because, you know, I tell everyone, you should be your greatest success story because you are going to go do everything you say to do correctly. Right. I mean, ideally. So you should be the person that you should be the story that you are most proud of. So I think you're, you're absolutely spot on, but I do want to, I know we're kind of blowing through our time here. I want to get down to kind of the nuts and bolts of this real quick. So 
how do you generate, we're, we're black belt selling, how do you generate lead sales signups for a home-based business? Um, some people have this idea that it takes a lot of money to do this type of stuff. So in your experience, is that true or go? I don't, I don't yeah. have anything else. <laughs> okay. If we're thinking about methods of generating leads, I mean, there are lots, okay? But I tend to think of this, you know, especially if we're talking, if this question's coming from uh, a cost kind of angle, there are two ways that you can generate leads. You can either generate leads um, through organic traffic means, which means that you're, you, that you're, you're, you're not paying for your traffic, you're using uh, social media. Or you can use paid traffic, which, you know, by virtue of its name, is, is, is where it costs money. Now, organic traffic is a great place for the kind of new entrepreneur or the budding entrepreneur to start because it generally, as I said, it's free. So you're using um, social media, you're sharing. You know, if we kind of just take a step back to what I was just talking about, the brand and understanding, you know, you, your audience and that whole piece, then once you understand that, you then need to know where to find your audience and you need to be able to share content of value with them. Okay, that's the process that people follow in attraction marketing, sharing content of value with their audience, um, which will have, you know, if it's structured in the right way, it will have a call to action at the end. And that call to action is ultimately going to take people uh, uh, along a journey with you where it, that's going to lead to sales or sign ups or whatever your goal on an objective is. Okay. Now, it's great and it works really, really well. And I teach people, you know, how to, how to build their business using attraction marketing. It does come at a cost, but not a financial cost. It comes at the cost being time because you have to create your content. You have to spend a lot of time on social media, kind of building relationships and, and reaching out to people and having conversations, uh, following up, actively prospecting, all of that stuff takes time. So that's definitely something to think about. What I like to do with um, my students and the people that I coach is to say, look, that's probably where you want to be starting unless you've got capital to start investing in some kind of paid activity. Um, so generally speaking, most entrepreneurs will say that they don't have two pennies to rub together. So they'll start with attraction marketing and they'll put a lot of time and effort into building up, uh, you know, this kind of raving tribe of fans and followers that then start to buy from them. And then they start to generate an income. And at that point, I then start to talk to my, my clients about how they can start to use that income and leverage it to, to really start exponentially building their business by investing in paid traffic. Because if we look at something like, Facebook advertising, for example, Facebook advertising, you have to obviously pay for, mm -hmm. but I love it because you can be laser targeted about who you want to, to uh, put your message in front of. So rather yeah. than kind of being in this, you know, in this mode uh, in attraction marketing where you've kind of identified your audience and you're, you're putting valuable content out there. What you can do now is to say, I've got this valuable content and I'm putting it straight in front of the people that I know are going to want to consume it because I know lots and lots about them. I've done my homework and those people are going to start to see your content in the form of paid ads, which you can do. You can deliver adverts in so many different ways. Now video opt-ins, there's lots of different ways. Um, some of those people are then going to start raising their hand and saying, I want to know more. I want to know more. And Facebook advertising actually doesn't have to be that expensive. You can start running Facebook ads for around $5 in a day. And if you can generate five to 10 leads a day where some people are raising their hand and saying, your content is resonating with me and your call to action is something that I want to act upon. So they're kind of saying to you, yeah, let's have a conversation. How powerful is that? If you can afford to spend five to ten dollars, five dollars a day to get five yeah. to ten leads, then suddenly you're in a good place because if you've got a fairly good closing rate, that's going to grow very, very quickly. So it doesn't have to be that expensive to start generating leads. And as I said, you can do it for free. There are lots and lots of different techniques and strategies that you can use. You know, I could reel them off, but in the interest of time, I won't bore you with that. But you know, the approach has to be to find people that are interested in what you've got to buy and to get your message in front of them now ultimately you have to think you know the way that the successful people view this is that they're not thinking about you know if i spend five dollars a day how many leads does that get me because if mm -hmm. none of those leads are converting into sales the money's wasted so you have to think about cost per acquisition what does it actually cost me to get a customer and if you have a product that makes a hundred dollars 
for argument's sake, and your cost per customer, once you've looked at all of your ad spend, what does it take to convert them into, into a customer? If that, if that costs you $50, you're in a good place because for every time you spend $50, you're doubling it. So you want to keep doing that. And that's how you're going to grow and scale your business very, very quickly. That's a good, um, that's a really good rule of thumb because um, I've, I've dealt with people and they're like, well, what's my ROI on advertising? And I said, well, that, you know, if you're going to look at how many leads that brings you, it's probably not going to be an effective way to look at your um, marketing business or, or the marketing for your business. So um, that's, boy, that was worth a lot. And also, if you're listening to this and you're really curious about more details about Facebook marketing, um, we're going to give you Danny's information at the end of this. And you really want to uh, connect with him. Obviously, he's done a lot with it. And uh, he understands the place of uh, not having two pennies to rub together versus um, having $50 to spend on acquisition. So I really want to encourage you to do that. Um, but let's focus a little bit on video marketing because it's becoming all the rage. And uh, one of the things that I know is true is that if I put a video up, I'm more likely to get at least more views to a post than if I just even put up a picture. And of course, uh, a post with just copy or just words isn't really going to get me as much as video. So um, just in a nutshell, if you can, <laughs> um, talk to us a little bit about video marketing and why it's important for people to incorporate that into their social media marketing and internet marketing. Yeah, well, I love video marketing. I built my business uh, heavily last year using, initially I was, you know, again, it was on Facebook and I started off using, uh, well, I was pre-recording videos and uploading them. And then once uh, Facebook Live really started to take off I was doing live videos and you know with video this so I mean video marketing is a big topic there are so many different aspects to it what equipment do I need uh, should I do live video should I do pre-recorded video how do I get over the fear of doing video which is a big stumbling block for lots of lots of people um, you know what are the key steps to ensuring that my video is going to deliver and, and get me the results uh, there's, there's lots you can do if I had one piece of advice for people that were doing video in their marketing, I would, there's probably two pieces of advice. Actually, the first one is to be consistent. So you need to show up regularly and consistently so that your audience knows when and where they can find you. That's how you're going to build a following very, very quickly. If you just do the odd sporadic video here and there, there's no real kind of set pattern to when you're doing things. It's going to be pretty tricky for you, for you to build an audience, but going a bit deeper into the world of video marketing, I follow a, uh, I've kind of four step formula to dominate video when I'm putting together something using that medium. So I make sure that I follow a specific formula uh, through the course of the video. And I'll share that with you now. The first is to have an intro. Okay. So just open up by saying, Hey, this is Danny. Uh, you can check out my blog at my blog address and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you from St. Albans here in the UK. Just a very, very short intro. The thing with video is that we live in this kind of instant gratification, you know, on demand kind of world now. So if people can't see very, very quickly what they're going to get from watching your video within the first 10 seconds, that they're going to go away. So the next thing mm -hmm. you need to do is to ask a question. And the question that you want to ask has to be relevant to your audience. So, you know, let me just think of an example. I might, so for my network marketing audience, I might say, hey, are you a network marketer that's really struggling to generate consistent leads for your business on social media? Immediately, I've grabbed the attention of the people that are network marketers that are struggling to um, generate leads on social media. And then I'll move into the third part, which is my really high value content. So I want to deliver some very, very high value content that is going to answer that question. Okay, cool. So let me show you how I generate leads on social media for my network marketing business and, and reel off some, some tips for them. And the mo is it the most important part? They're all equally important, but at the end, you have to have a call to action. So at the end, you want to ask the audience to do something. Now, it, it, it depends on, the, on who your audience are. If you're, if you're marketing on video to a colder audience, you might just want to ask them to do something simple like share the video or like your page and if you're marketing to a slightly warmer audience you might want them to ask them to take action like opting into an offer so hey go to this address this um this web address enter your details and you'll get a copy of my latest 
guide um, or you might even want to say you know check out my training course or something like that but the call to action is crucial because it's going to uh it's going to make sure you get the results from the work you've done with the video nice i think that's huge i think people forget to do that i mean i'm thinking back to some of my videos and i'm going hmm wait a second <laughs> i can think right there of some uh, some call to actions i've just you know you get in the moment you're going great in the video and then it's done um, so I think that that's an amazing reminder right there. Um, I will ask this one cause I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. I have my ideas, but I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What would you say is probably the biggest mistake most home business owners make online and what should they be doing instead or what should they do to try and avoid that mistake? Yeah. Okay. This is an easy one for me to answer because it's something that I talk about a lot. Um, and anybody that has been following me for any length of time probably knows what I'm going to say right now. My passion is branding. I've talked a little bit about branding already, but people buy from people and they generally tend not to want to buy so much from companies, especially when we're kind of in this home based online world. Um, so people are going, to, are going to want to know what they're going to get when they engage with you. You know, what do you stand for? for what your passion, all that kind of stuff. So if you're in the world of home-based business and you're, um, you're promoting something from a company, you absolutely categorically must not brand yourself kind of behind the, the, the facade of that company brand. Okay. You don't want to be leading with that company brand because, mm -hmm. well, in fact, you want to distance yourself from it as much as possible. And there are a number of reasons for that, but especially in the early days, when you are establishing yourself, when you're quite new to this whole online marketing kind of gig, then you want to make sure that you're building up a strong presence for yourself, branding yourself and your name. Now, when you get to, you know, having a hundred thousand plus followers, then yeah, sure. You can talk about, you know, a little bit about the products and services that you represent because you've already got your following. You've got a loyal followers that are going to kind of be interested in that kind of stuff, but you should always start by branding yourself. And, I am. Um, I think we're going to talk about this at the end, but it's it's relevant for me to mention it now. I've recently completed a a pretty kind of brief and succinct guide called the Six Steps to Refining Your Personal Brand, which is a free download. And the reason I called it that is because if you're if you have a presence online, if you've got a Facebook profile, if you're on Twitter, if you're whatever online, and pretty much most people are these days, then guess what? Your brand already exists, okay? Because your brand is about how you're perceived by everybody else online, okay? Right. Everybody else that's, that's going to take time to look. So it, I used to talk about building your brand, but now I talk about refining your brand because it's there. You, do, you, know, you need to build it up, but you've got to work out what are the things that I need to do in order to make sure that my brand is working for me? Okay, what, what am I doing to make myself attractive to other people as opposed to having this brand that's actually repelling people from me, a repellent brand, mm. not an attractive brand. And, you know, the, the problem that we, that we have, especially in home-based business online, is that most uplines, if we're thinking about the network marketing world, because I, I, I have a lot of clients in that space, most uplines will teach people that they need to be talking about their product at any opportunity. So I, I get phone requests from people in network marketing and I'll check out their profile on Facebook because that's what you do. And I'll just see that it's like a, 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 a commercial, a never ending stream of commercials for the, the product that they work with. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. How do I know? Because A, I've done it. B, I've spoken to lots of other people that have done it. It doesn't work. You just end up, people just get sick and tired of seeing it. And your, your followers eradicate, your friends start disappearing and it, it doesn't work. The only people that do kind of like that stuff are other network marketers, other network marketers who are all caught up in this world of, well, this is the way we build our business. It's absolutely not. It doesn't work. You've got to concentrate on understanding your ideal audience and how you can serve them and positioning yourself as somebody that they want to engage with not just saying hey i've got a special on this product time you know buy two get one free people don't care about that they don't come onto facebook to buy their products so the question was what's the biggest mistake people can make online and how do they avoid it my answer just to summarize is that they have to brand themselves and they have to not market their company and they kind of do that stuff in the background excellent excellent advice i think um I think even for people who are trying to build their own business without being part of network marketing, we can still fall in that trap because we're trying to be like somebody else. You know, 
We're not trying to be who we uniquely are. And it's scary because then we're putting ourselves out there and hoping maybe we're putting too much into hoping people will like us. But what, but you're saying that really people are buying us. They're, um, they really want to work with us as people and they want to know that they're going to be in good hands and they'll be attracted to the kind of people we are based on how we present ourselves, how we come across on the internet. Um, and it has to be genuine and authentic. So we're not talking about people throwing stuff out there being fake. So we can just throw that away. Um, and you know, we have had such a good time. There's more questions we wanted to ask you. So obviously, Danny, you're not done on black belt selling. We absolutely have to have you back. But I think this is a really good time to talk about your offer, uh, especially in light of the fact that you were talking about the importance of personal branding. So share with our listeners how they can learn more about that, get in touch with you, because obviously you are, um, you're delightful to have, and I know that people want to learn from you. That's very kind of you to say thank you. Yeah, so um, people can contact me uh, through my blog, which is www.dannyyoungonline.com, and they can also download a free copy of the handbook that I was just talking about, The Six Steps to Refining Your Personal Brand, and that can be found at www.dannyyoungonline.com forward slash branding. So, go ahead. Cool. I was just I was just going to reiterate that one for our <laughs> listeners. So for those of you guys who are listening and can't see it, that's Danny D as in dog A N N Y, young as in like you young man you online .com. <laughs> Um, and to get the uh, the free giveaway, which that sounds awesome, is to go to dannyyoungonline.com forward slash branding. So, Danny, I think Mom's right. I think we will have to have you back on here. Somehow I get the feeling you could talk for a lot longer than just a half hour. <laughs> if I didn't bore you too much. Oh, not no, boring at all. There's still so much more. Yeah, um, there's more. My guess is there'd be a lot more back here that we haven't pulled out yet because I'm sure you're still a little fried from pulling the master class. So we'd love to have you back. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. and I'd love to be back. So, yeah, that, that would be awesome. Awesome. Well, for our listeners out there, you guys, this is exactly what Black Belt Selling is about. It's about bringing the expert, the person who has accomplished what they're talking about accomplishing to you, making them available to give you the ideas, the training, the coaching, the mindsets you need to be successful. We appreciate you guys joining us every single week. You make the difference for us. You being involved, you listening, you checking out our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash black belt selling is what makes us keep going. So do us a favor, do yourself a favor, join the group, stay, stay inspired and motivated because as Zig Ziglar once said, motivation is what is just like bathing. We recommend you do it daily. We will look forward to having you guys back here with us again next week. You know, we're always here with great guests, great content, and great energy to end your week on a high note. I'm Stephanie here for Anna. We're the Black Belt Sellers of Southwest and Central Texas. Whatever it is you sell, let's sell more. <laughs>